Hi there, today I'm going to show you how to start building your Pandadoc QuickBooks integration. So whenever a document is completed in Pandadoc, an invoice is created in QuickBooks and sent to the client or customer immediately. Let me show you how this works. So I just sent a document to the recipients. This is how the client will see that document. So they receive an email, they open the document, they start the signature process, the everything looks good items the totals and then they accept and sign click on finishing and then once they get back into their invoice will show up soon i'm going to leave this open for a minute I'm going to grab some water okay i received a copy of the signed document actually the client receives a copy and there you go an invoice was sent to the client by quickbooks and they can open it pay it and move forward from here and for the sake of completeness i just wanted to show you how this looks like in quickbooks if i reload this page there you go an invoice was created with the total amount and with the correct line items as well. Hi there, I'm Andres from Connex. We are an automations and integrations agency and we help companies like yours automate Pandadoc and QuickBooks. Do you have an integration need or an automation idea? Look the link in the description below to book a free discovery call with us. To build this, I'm going to use Zapier. Zapier.com is a platform that allows you to automate your workflows and connect your apps. Uh, today, I'm going to give you an overview of this integration. If you want to learn how Zapier works and getting started with Zapier, drop a comment below and I'm going to send you our tutorial to get started with Zapier. Now, quickly, this automation starts whenever a document is completed in Pandadoc. It finds the customers and products for this agreement and then creates an invoice and sends it to the customer. Let's see in details the steps so for the trigger, I chose Pandadoc as the app and document completed. After you connect your Pandadoc account, you can configure to monitor a specific document or template from Pandadoc. Then you hit continue and test record. What Zapier does here is trying to pull an existing agreement that you recently signed. So you can understand what kind of fields come together with this um, trigger okay so the next step i want to focus on is this find customer this find customer requires the email of the customer or client to find uh, the customer in quickbooks now from the trigger customer and client and company emails come together as an array so we need to split those emails and we use utilities formatted by zapier and we use formatted by zapier uh, line item to text to split them up. So here in the input, you bring in the recipient's emails. That here you can see they come uh, both together and you can either add here a separator or leave this as it is. Transformation is line item to text. And when you test this, this is the output. You will get both emails separated. An important tip for keep this automation simple is to always have the sender and the recipient in the same signed documents in the same order. If you can't control that, feel free to reach out. We can work around that and build a more complex Zap to handle those situations. Okay, so once we have that email, we find the customer and luckily QuickBooks finds it. If your client is not in QuickBooks yet, it's worth having a workflow to add them. So it's already there when we create an invoice. The next step is to find products. And we have this action event for QuickBooks. So after you connect your QuickBooks account, you can type here, find products. And if you usually handle more than one product, be sure to use this second action, find products. Otherwise the find product only works for uh, a single product. 
when you configure this action, you can bring the pricing table items name from Pandadoc. This contains the services or products as aligned items altogether. And the result is the products found in QuickBooks. So if it is only one product, this will return only one product. If it finds more than one product, this will return all the products found. Optionally, this uses the names, the services names or product names. Uh, optionally, you could be using SKUs as well. Hit continue continue and the next step is to create an invoice so we have all the information we need we have customer and the products we just need to create this invoice how to do that you need to select the customer here now you cannot bring in the name of the customer here or the email address you need the id of the customer and this is the quickbooks id of the customer the id was returned by the third step when we found the customer first. So going back to the invoice configuration, instead what you usually see when you create this action is a drop down here to select your customer. However, we want this dynamic. So hit the three buttons on the side, hit custom, and now look for the ID coming from step three. Actually, it's not this one, but it's this one with a value. There you go. Optionally, you can bring the email address that this is going to be sent I suggest to use uh, the same primary email address that you've stored in QuickBooks. Otherwise, you can bring the output from step three, which is uh, basically the same. If you don't select this, um, QuickBooks will find the primary email address and will use that to send the invoice. Then scrolling down, you can set everything up. All these um, fields are optional. And here is the place where we select the products and the quantities for this invoice. So again, the products and services, this has the same logic with the customer. You cannot input here the product names directly, but you need to input the IDs of this product, the QuickBooks IDs. We found the IDs uh, in step four, so we just need to input those see going back so you input the output from step four and then you can bring the quantity this can you can bring the quantity here from pandadoc directly as well as the total amount i have in quickbooks stored the rates already which are the same than in pandadoc so um i don't need to map at this point and that's it the rest is uh, optional and uh, depending on your business you may want to fill in all these fields as well the last step is to send invoice to the client so to set this up you need to select again the quickbooks connector the action event is just to send the invoice and in the configuration it asks which invoice do you want to send well when you create this step and this steps runs this will create um, an invoice with a specific id which is here so when you want to send the invoice you need to tell quickbooks which invoice you want to send optionally you can set uh, an email here as well Otherwise, QuickBooks will find the connected email to this invoice. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and saw how easy it is to get started integrating Pandadoc and QuickBooks. If you need help in integrating this or maybe you have special requirements for your company, you can reach out to us. We are more than happy to help. Again, look the link in the description below to book a free discovery call with us. Otherwise, if you need to connect Pandadoc to other apps, like other accounting software like Xero or project management tools like Monday, Asana or Hive, that's doable with Zapier as well. I'm pretty curious to learn which app you need to connect Pandadoc with. Drop that in the comment below. I read every comment and happy to reply and uh, see if I can help building more tutorials around Pandadoc. Have a great day. Cheers.